guys welcome to digital tech join i hope everybody is doing good and in this video tutorial i'm going to cover my sixth video tutorial on learn web api so in my channel there is already a playlist that i had created which is uh, ultimate web api guide and in this uh, playlist i've already uploaded around five videos uh, right from creating a web api from the scratch in 60 minutes till consuming web api in asp.net mvc application then some of the best practices on consuming the web api then finally the most important how to create or secure your web api using jwt token json web token and then finally consuming those secured api in your asp.net mvc application now what are we going to cover in the sixth video is how do you do caching that is how do you cache your api response for better performance typically for all the get requests you can definitely uh, cache those api response for your better application performance also uh, not necessary that you have to catch each and every request but it is the best practice because sometimes depending upon the requirement if you have uh, if you are fetching your api to fetch the city master or state master or anything information that is very static in nature and which does not uh, undergo a lot of changes you should definitely you know incorporate caching this those endpoints so that it it, it it results into a better performance of the application so now let's go ahead and just run our project so this is a project that we already have created in this five series and i'll just ensure that both the project that is the demo api and the school management is uh, set as startup so i'll just go to properties and yes it is already set up startup and i'll just run this and show you the work that we have done in all this uh, five series of video and then we will do the uh, caching of api response the video should be short because uh, there is it, it's a quick uh, a trick that we can use it so this is uh, my API uh, endpoints it's in the swagger. Uh, we had created a, a login and then we had created token creation and then we used uh, to pass the token and all this API response for um, authenticating the user. And this was a front end where I click on the login. I had created a login page in my last series and then you can, I'm just logging in. Now once I log in, I get a token and then when I click on uh, the students, I get the entire list of students over here and with additional feature of editing adding and deleting the record now i've increased the number of records away and i'll be going ahead and increasing later more records to this uh, database so that in my next video i can also show you how to implement paging in api and then add paging in your front end as well so coming back to our topic caching of api response so we are going to cache this response students response so we will make sure that we you know uh, cache this response and we'll show how the response you know works uh, in chrome developer tool and how we can see the uh, performance improved so uh, let's uh, right click on the demo api project and set this as a startup project because we are going to do the work over here and uh, add those caching so first thing is that in your demo api we will have to go to your program.cs just after the no you can just add it basically over here you need to add, tell the application that you need to cache the response so for that you are going to say builder dot services dot add response caching so this is the parameter you need to add it so once you tell the application that you need to cache the response you need to go to the particular endpoint and also add the duration over there so in our case i'm going to go to students controller and let's focus first on the getting all records of students so here right up to authorize you can simply add a attribute called response cache and then you mention the duration here i'm saying 30 seconds so this is how i'm going to catch the response so i will just show you i'm just to going to add a breakpoint over here and in order to uh, show this demo in the swagger uh, i'm going to just for temporary purpose just highlight you know uh, comment the authorize so that i can use the swagger and i don't need to pass any uh, bearer token right now to fulfill this demo so now i go to students and i've already added a breakpoint over here so now this 
cache will be this um, you know in the setup in the um, cache database for 30 seconds and after 30 seconds a new request will be it so we can see that so right now uh, the, this is my first uh, hit to the fetching all the students so I'm going to say try out and I'm going to say execute and here you can see the breakpoint is um, it has come to the breakpoint and I'm going to just press F7 and display all the record over here now if I click on execute again it will not go to the breakpoint because it is fetching from the cache response so this will happen till 30 seconds so now I'm just going to pause for uh, no more than 30 seconds and once I click on the execute again after 30 seconds you will notice that it it is again will again go to this breakpoint and fetch the records we will see that in action right away okay so now i'm going to click on execute again and here you can see this time it is getting the fresh record from the database so this is as simple as that now what i'm going to do is that show that in the chrome developer tool how this things work so i'm going to click on Control shift i and this is the developer tool or you can also click on the browser over here right over here you can see there is uh, settings or you, well, just one sec there is this this more tool over here there's an option called more tool and then developer so now what i'm going to do is just going to refresh this page over here and click on network is already clicked on network and i'll click on all okay over here you can see all the resources are getting loaded in the swagger now i'm going to click on students and try out okay and here i can say uh, execute so now it is calling the breakpoint there's a breakpoint so here you can see student here so you can see the student call over here and i'll just show you it it is taken around 6.6.0 uh, kb and the second is 4.87 uh, 4 seconds now i'm going to execute it again here you can see the same record is fetched and it is fetched from disk cache and the millisecond is 2 so i keep uh, clicking on that now since the 30 seconds is over so now you can see again it is taking that much of time but if i click on it is you can see the data of students getting fetched but the response type is, time is nearly one or two milliseconds this is how it is um, you know uh, getting the data from the cache now i'm going to do is that i'm going to enable the same feature i'm going to copy response cache and go to the student details over here and paste it over here as well and i'll just comment uh, authorize attribute for now and I'll just run the project again fine so now we are back over here now I'm going to again click on and just enter uh, press ctrl shift i to open the developer tool now this time I'm going to click on get students and I'm going to say try out I'm going to click on net it's already on network and click on all and i'm going to click enter the student code and say execute so you can see it is fetching the it has fetched the student details for id 1 and here you can see it is 274 uh, uh, bytes and 2.31 seconds i'm going to click it again now you can see it is coming now in milliseconds now this id 1 is already cached now I'm click on enter id 2 it will take uh, 90 minutes seconds but if i click on uh, enter again id 1 and execute it will still come out uh, in milliseconds so it is it is caching based on the response uh, id as well so you can see the um, on the right hand side how it is taking time based on the id now again click on 1 or 2 it has already cached those records so it is it is showing in milliseconds so this is how you can improve the performance of the application now what we see over here is that if I have lots of endpoints, I need to keep repeating response at cache and duration 30 uh, seconds over here. What if I have lots of endpoints, I need to add a standard rule to all the get endpoints saying that it should not take, uh, it, that it should be cached for say 30 seconds or 20 seconds. In order to do that, we can implement something called uh, cache profile where you can simply you know set 
uh, this at a global level and then refer that cache name into various endpoints so let's see how we can do that we will go to programs and here we have already added uh, add response cache and we also have something called builder or service add controller now inside the controller we are going to add the cache profile so we can going to say options and i'm going to add options dot cache profile dot add and i'm going to name it as api cache okay so this is the name and then i have to set the duration so i'm going to say comma new cache profile okay so new cache profile and and i'm going to set the duration inside that so this will be my duration will be 30 seconds it's additional added over here okay so this is how one minute yeah i'm just going to use this cache object over here so that uh, my code can be shorter and this will be my new cache profile okay this is how you need to add the setup. So, building it or service add controller. Inside add controller options and then options dot cache profile. Add cache profile. This is my profile name. API cache and then comma and then new cache profile. Um, and then inside that I set the duration of 30 seconds. So, once I do this, you just need to copy this API cache name and go to your endpoints. And instead of cache response dot cache duration, here I am simply going to say cache profile name and i'm going to paste this name over here api cache so now i can copy this and paste wherever i want this to duration to be applied so that whenever there is a change for instance i need to change the duration from 30 to 1 minute or from 30 to 20 seconds or 15 seconds i can do that right over here instead of making the changes in all the endpoints so let us see uh, once we add this let's go to our just run the project and then again we'll see caching in action for all the um, endpoints uh, control shift i okay and then i'm going to say get student and execute so you can see um, it's ex one minute just it's there's a breakpoint over here i'm just going to remove this now okay now you can see so the student got executed uh, the data got executed now in i can click on again so yes it is now at eight milliseconds two milliseconds uh, similarly if i go to get students and i just say try out and enter one you can see get student details is fetched with 250 uh, 256 milliseconds but i enter again and execute now it's four milliseconds similarly two for student id it will fetch the record but you can see the differences over here again if i click on id2 you can see the differences over here. so the cache profile is working for both the endpoints and you can see that how the api is uh, data is cached and you can see the in performance improvement over here so whenever you have any read only data and, and uh, um, which does not uh, change frequently then definitely you need to do the api caching using this method now what we're going to do is that we can all so this was api caching but what if I need to also add the caching in my you uh, know ASP.NET MVC project you can definitely do that you can you need to add the same level of duration over there as well and you can also cache um, the uh, front-end application as well so you can you can cache uh, uh, basically you can use two mechanism in your front-end MVC application you can definitely uh, you know uh, create a uh, object you can fetch the data and then you can definitely add that uh, in the in your code you can uh, where i have called uh, like for example let me just go ahead and just add the authorized tag back to this endpoints 
and let me go to let me go to right click the solution and let me start up both the project and now let me go to school management and controller go to students here you can see my index method over here. i'm going to keep, click a breakpoint over here now what what if i want to also uh, cache the browser response for 30 seconds over here so typically when i uh, just i'll just run the project i click on login and uh, because here it's a front end so i need to pass the token as i explained in my previous uh, tutorials okay so there is some exception one minute just i'll just check maybe because of this changes that i did So rebuild this project again and start it. It should work. Okay, so I'm going to click on login and admin admin and click on student and here you can see the data is getting fetched. Now what if I want so I'm going to click uh, put a breakpoint in the MVC application index over here which fetches all the record and I'm going to click on student again you can see it is it is calling the API um, every time when I uh, call the students uh, link so what if I want to also cache uh, this browser response uh, for 30 seconds as I've already done for my API. So I need to follow the same rule. So I'm going to just add it over here in my ASP.NET MVC front end application response cache and I'm going to say duration and you can do the same thing over here as well. As I sh showed you, you can create a profile uh, which I already showed you in the API project. Now if I run the project, so for the first request it will call the api and for a subsequent request it, it should not call the api so here you can see i'm going to call the it it is actually calling the api response but now when i click on see the now you can see it is not even calling the api and it is actually uh, fetching this data as well from the uh, cache so here in this case you can see the api data is cached for 30 seconds as well as the front end client is also now you know uh, requesting for the api okay within the only after the threshold of the cache duration that i specified now we'll wait for 30 seconds and then when we click on again we should be able to uh, fetch the record again here you can see again the after 30 seconds the data was called and i was able i'm actually uh, getting the data fresh from the uh, database so you need to be very careful when you are only working with the api then and api as well as a client tool then you need to handle this caching uh, at both the hands um, so and you need to also specify the timing accordingly so if you want that uh, both api as well as your client tool has a 30 seconds of threshold you can set as 30 seconds and so that you can manage those uh, accordingly so guys uh, with this video tutorials i've shown you how to implement caching in your api layer as well as in your client on your in your asp.net mvc application uh, for uh, students who are coming in for the first time watching this video make sure that you watch all these videos over here uh, i am very much sure that uh, anyone who wants to learn how to develop web apis using ASP.NET MVC application or Visual Studio 2022 uh, will be definitely able to learn basic as well as advanced uh, um, topics on developing and managing your API tools. So I request everybody to watch all the video and or then watch the sixth video on caching the response. Now in my seventh video, I am going to show you how to implement cache uh, a paging in API and also implement that in your front end application. So guys, uh, stay tuned. Uh, please do subscribe my channel and uh, please do like and comment my channel and please do share my channel link with your friend, family and colleagues and help us grow this uh, digital tech joint community. Thank you so much.